What is up, guys? Welcome back for week eight of the GBA. This week we are playing uh, somebody that I consider to be a rival at this point, Jolt. Uh, we did hacks him out of a, uh, <clears throat> a pretty crucial game last season in the, uh, the D-League. Uh, if you guys remember week five where he just missed hurricanes and focus blasts like nobody on the face of this planet uh, But we are back if you guys don't know Jolt's team by now Then uh, you haven't been following the GPA because this man as you can see on screen is 7-0 and with a plus 23 record And then on the other side of the spectrum you got us with a 1-6 and minus 14 record So this is the first time I've had the uh, records up on screen. Also, this is uh, <clears throat> the second third time, excuse me that I'm doing a post -com. Um, obviously the layout's a lot better this time than in week one, I feel anyway. There's nothing cutting off the screen or anything. So, uh, looking at the matchup, uh, I brought a very, very different team than what I normally do. Uh, as you guys can see, there's a Fortress, there's a Scolipede, uh, a Zoroark, a Darmanitan, a Zapdos, and a Megalopony. So this team can cons be considered balanced, uh, or slightly more lean towards offense. But no, uh, I decided to bring absolute full offense. So, I'll explain my sets to you guys. The Fortress is Mental Herb uh, to, uh, to dodge Taunt uh, from anything including High Dragon, anything that he would run Taunt on, uh, essentially. And uh, I've got uh, Gyro Ball, Rapid Spin, Explosion, and Stealth Rocks. This guarantees me up rocks. Uh, I can explode and uh, and pretty much nuke something, other than Celesteela, of course. Uh, so, But I can kill myself on the Celesteela as well if I'm at full, if he doesn't manage to get off a Flamethrower on me, uh, which is very nice. Uh, also, he's very unlikely to run Flamethrower. I think Air Slash is the better move to run in this matchup. Uh, maybe something teched on like Stone Edge uh, for the Zapdos as well. Would be able to hit the uh, the Fortress as well as the uh, the Scallopede pretty uh, neutrally and super effectively everywhere. So, uh, I think that's the sort of set that he would bring. And um, so yeah, uh, I should be able to live any hit other than Flamethrower and explode in space, preventing the Beast Boost, which is always nice. Uh, and uh, next up we have Scallopede. I'll explain Scallopede. So, uh... <laughs> The meme is back, ladies and gentlemen. We are Mono Throat Shop. Uh, I'll explain why. He has a Rotom, and the Rotom is the one thing stopping me from clicking Endeavor all over his team. I'm sub Endeavor. I have 60 HP, 212 in attack. I just deleted one of my sets. How do I undo a delete? There we go. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I have uh, 60 HP, 212 in attack, and uh, 236 speed with a boosting nature, so jolly. Uh, the speed, I can't remember exactly if it was for High Dragon, I don't think it was, it was for something slightly faster on his team uh, that I can't seem to put my finger on right now, uh, which was, what was it, maybe the Durant, possibly, uh, I can't remember at this point, but anyway, uh, yeah, that sounds about right, 236 Jolly is, uh, is Durant, uh, so I'm Mono Throat Chop with, uh, with Substitute, Endeavor, and Spikes, so my idea here is to use these two bugs, to uh, completely hazard stack his team, seeing as that his hazard removal is extremely limited uh, and is an unlikely to be brought against me. Uh, so the Hydra being one of his best ha forms of hazard removal, and the Rotom being the other one, which is why I have Throat Chop, so that I can two-hit KO it. Uh, and it also is the one thing stopping me from clicking Endeavor. That or Rocky Helmet Mons, of course, uh, also kind of uh, stifle that. So. I'm gonna have to watch out for that. I do have a Megalopony, so Rocky Helmet is pretty uh, likely to come, uh, or something of the sort. So, uh, yeah, and uh, Hazard Stack, pretty straightforward. Next up, we have Yato, the um, the Zoroark. Uh, I'm running a Choice Scarf set with Dark Pulse, Flamethrower, U-Turn, and Trick. So Trick is really good for tricking the Celesteela. Uh, his defensive options, such as the Seismitoad and the Arcanine that you see uh, over on the right, uh, as well as a few of his other mons, for example, uh, Lolan Persian with a Choice Scarf isn't too effective. Uh, Breloom, uh, without an item, is, uh, without its, its intended item can be very, very nice for me. Uh, same thing with Durant. Durant, I don't want to give a Choice Scarf though, because that thing is dangerous. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, there's that. Uh, next up, we have uh, Darmanitan. So Darmanitan, I decided to run a Jolt set, and uh, this is uh, a set that I saw Jolt use uh, when I first started watching the Token Minorities, uh, and it's uh, Fire Punch, Earthquake, Belly Drum, Sub. I have 252 HP. Now, this is very crucial. I have 252 HP and 44 defense. This is enough to take Arcanine's E-Speed, uninvested E-Speed, from 25%. So after I go for Sub plus Belly Drum, even if my Sub is broken, his Arcanine can't revenge me. Breloom could have done the job, 
but there was a chance that Berloom wouldn't come. I really thought he would bring Berloom because you look at my team and um, I have Megalopony, I have Zoroark, uh, I have Darmanitan, all of these things that don't like taking priority Mach Punch, especially from Life Orb, and then he can just run Rock Tomb for the Zapdos and predict a switch, and he pretty much deals with almost my entire team. So I really, really expected the Berloom to be uh, his grass type of choice this game. Mega Venu also does a lot of work to my team, but uh, he could have brought both as well. Uh, the Mon that I was most surprised to see on his team was actually Hydreigon. I didn't think it was going to come. Uh, I, I was in call with Jolt uh, and a few of the other guys in the NPL, uh, the day before our match, and um, I actually listed off the six mons that I thought Jolt was going to bring, and he was like, maybe, uh, I was off by one, so not too bad, uh, that's actually th the closest prediction that I've, I think I've had all season, so this Darm is designed to uh, beat him once his Scarfer is gone, essentially, uh, and as long as he doesn't bring the Reloom, it kills everything else. If you look at his team, everything dies. Uh, plus six Earthquake kills Seismitoad, um, Arcanine dies to Earthquake, uh, Venusaur dies to Fire Punch. Uh, even High Dragon, if it wasn't Scarfed, would die to Fire Punch at plus six. It's it's ridiculous how strong this thing is. Uh, and uh, Sully obviously dies. So it was really to take advantage of me being able to get rid of a Scarfer as a result of my hazards. His most likely Scarfer, of course, being High Dragon. So maybe not the best idea, but I still had an intention to, to use this Darmanitan to win. Uh, next up, we have Zapdos. Now, back in the GPC, uh, playoffs. The first time around uh, Season 5, I played Merc, Mr. Murkrow, and uh, he has a, he had a Mega Venusaur, and I was uh, I was under the impression that Zapdos could just deal with it. Uh, it's a flying type, gets Air Cutter. When I saw the roll on his Mega Venusaur, <laughs> it was doing like 23 to the 31. It was pathetic damage. I was I was I was appalled with Zapdos. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna bring an offensive Zapdos this time. I decided to run E Belt, Thunderbolt, Air Cutter, uh, Hidden Power, Grass, and Roost. As you see, his team doesn't like dealing with this Zapdos at all. Air Cutter was there specifically for the Berloom. I outsped Berloom. I have 204 speed. I'm 248 in special attack with a boosting nature. I have 12 in speed F and 44 in HP. This is to be able to take Sludge Bombs a little bit better from the, uh, uh, from the Venusaur. And I could already two-hit KO a very, very specially defensive Venusaur uh, with Air Cutter, especially after any hazard. I automatically two-hit KO, so there's no way that he could uh, synth stall me. Uh, so that was the idea there. Uh, Air Cutter actually does two hit KO Venusaur, uh, but you need to run a lot of attack, a boosting nature, and an expert belt apparently. So the Zapdos can put in a lot of work on his team. I uh, expect it to get one to two kills uh, as a result. And then the final one is Reen. It's so straightforward. Drain Punch, Power Up Punch, Return, and Sub. Once again, another Mon that functions so, so well. Uh, once his choice Scarfer is gone. I expect him to run one to two checks to my Megalopony, uh, essentially, because it does a lot of work to his team, and uh, unless he brings a, a good Revenger like Scarfed uh, Hydreigon with Focus Blast, Superpower, something like that, or Scarf Guard with Moonblast or Psychic, then he just does not deal with this mon. I considered running uh, my last move over Sub uh, being Quick Attack just to deal with the Breloom, but I was like, you know what, I think I have a enough for Breloom and the fact that I can Spike Stack him without him having uh, the chance to necessarily defog uh, on his team should be enough to deal with Breloom. Uh, so that's that's kind of the logic that I went with. So you guys see the matchup on screen, uh, the six that he brought. So Hydreigon kind of sp surprised me a little bit, uh, but right off the bat I'm thinking, okay, that's probably his choice Scarfer. Uh, and I'm looking at my team and I'm like, okay, I think I can deal with this. So we're going to hop into the battle. I decide to lead off with Fortress as my dedicated lead, as he's going to lead uh, with his Hydra. And uh, right away, I'm like, okay, I gotta click rocks. Just get him up. Doesn't matter what he goes into. Doesn't matter what he does. Uh, I'm just gonna click rocks. I'm gonna get them up. And he doesn't look like he has defog on his team, so they should be up for the remainder of the game. So I'm gonna click rocks. Trev CL is gonna go for a U-turn. This screams choice scarf to me. I'm like, this is this is 100% scarf. So he goes for a U-turn. I take the damage. I don't calc it. Uh, by the way, I, I didn't have my HP bar or anything, so I had nothing to refer to. I had to kind of base myself off of what I saw. So I'm going to go for Stealth Rocks here, and uh, what you guys are going to see on the uh, next couple of turns is going to be actually a suggestion from my buddy Dom, Dom's Game Room, who does top plays for the GBA. Uh, he said, you should probably do the same thing for two turns, or like be predictable for two turns, and then do something completely unpredictable on the third turn. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go for Rapid Spin on his Seismitoad, knowing that it's probably going to want to get up rocks. I see the Rocky Helmet, so I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to click Spin again, which is kind of uh, a weird play, considering that I'm eventually going to die to the Rocky Helmet, and I'm not going to get off my Spin on that turn. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to go for Spin one more time, and this turn, I'm going to decide to explode. Uh, and... 
I actually managed to catch Jolt going for an Earthquake, trying to put me a little bit lower uh, to, to stop my Rapid Spins from constantly coming out and weakening his Seismitoad. Uh, and I'm going to go down to 45%. I'm going to kill myself with uh, with Explosion, and I'm going to damage the Seismitoad severely as a result, which is really, really nice, because this is one of his Lopini checks, obviously, seeing that it's carrying Rocky Helmet. Uh, he's down to about 40%, so this is really good. I calc the uh, Explosion damage, and I figure out that, th and this is not Lopini, this is Zoroark, I figure out the Dark Pulse has a really, really good chance to kill. So I'm going to go into Zoroark, and what this does is actually baits in his real check, uh, Lejon Flames, to my Lopini, uh, the Arcanine. The Arcanine comes in, takes 25% from Rocks, I'm gonna get off a Dark Pulse. He goes for he gets off his Intimidate. It doesn't matter. I'm a special attacker. Gonna get off the Dark Pulse. And I'm gonna knock the uh, the Arcanine down to where it looks like it could be a 2 hit KO. He's gonna go for an extreme speed right here, and he's gonna do less than half to me. And uh, I get my illusion broken, obviously, and I'm gonna go for another Dark Pulse, and I actually managed to get the Oko right here on the uh, Arcanine. I don't know what kind of roll that was, if I min rolled it the first time, or if I, without my HP bar, I'm just completely oblivious uh, to what how much damage I'm doing, but uh, anyway, I got the roll, so that thing's dead. So now his Arcanine's down, so is his, uh, well, his Seismitoad's still alive. So I'm, I'm gonna just spam Dark Pulse at this point. I have no reason to. He went into his Venusaur as opposed to his High Dragon, which kind of, kind of, uh, it, it didn't scare me, but it was, uh, I, I was surprised. I was like, okay, well, if it is Choice Scarfed, why wouldn't you go into it now? You know that I'm either locked into Dark Pulse or I can't do anything to you, uh, because you, I'm not Scarfed. You get off your hit first, and he could have freely U-turned. So as you guys are going to see, I flinch him on the first uh, Dark Pulse. I get off the second one, and he goes for a Synthesis, and I'm like, okay, this is fine. I'm just going to spam it. If I get lucky, I get lucky, and I end up knocking out his Venusaur. If I don't, I don't need Zoroark for anything else. So I'm going to get him down to about 47%, and as I s talked about earlier, uh, if you guys did check that portion out of the video, uh, Zapdos can actually kill from here, and I think he was kind of surprised to see Zapdos come in. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but he does stay in with his Venusaur. Um... Being that it couldn't check anything else realistically, it wasn't a bad play. Uh, but I am able to knock out the Mega Venusaur, so two Mons down on his team. Uh, two big problems to me, uh, being his defensive Mons, uh, his core of Arcanine and Mega Venusaur. He's going to go into Mega Gar uh, excuse me, regular Gardevoir here, Sticks. He's going to trace my pressure, and I'm like, okay, this is fine. I'm going to go for T-Bolt. There's a chance that I'm faster. Uh, because of my investment, and it turns out I am, and I get off a massive amount of damage on this Gardevoir, which I was not expecting. I thought he might bring dual Scarfers as well. That was also an option. So he's going to go for Moonblast. He's going to knock me down to uh, about 20%-ish. Uh, uh, no, a little bit higher. Uh, than that, obviously, at like 26, and he gets this attack drop, and I'm thinking, okay, I might not be able to knock out this guard, but I do, uh, and the guard war goes down, so now three Mons down on his team, he has a weakened Seismitoad, and he has Hydreigon, and the, um, and the Celesteela left at full, the Hydreigon comes in, takes rocks, cool, I'm gonna stay in, I have no reason to keep this thing, uh, because I have another way of checking the Celesteela, which is, of course, my Darmanitan, as well as Endeavor Scolipede, which I'm gonna go into right here, now, uh, I wish I could pause this to explain it further to you guys, but uh, I calced Outrage, and if he was max attack adamant, there was a chance that he brought me below 25%, and I absolutely needed damage off on the Hydreigon, uh, Hydreigon, excuse me, and on top of that, uh, I couldn't go for sub here, if he got off a, um, a two-turn Outrage as opposed to a three, which you're gonna see he gets, uh, a three-turn Outrage, then uh, I would have been in a position where clicking Endeavor would have killed me, uh, because he would have gone Seismitoad, he would have let it uh, drop to 8%, and then he would have uh, he would have killed me off with the Rocky Helmet as a result. So that wasn't my play. I needed the Hydra Weaken to be able to win. He gets confused this turn. I'm like, alright, that's fine. I'm gonna click Endeavor here, no matter what. He goes into Seismitoad, it doesn't matter. I could click Spikes, but it doesn't matter, because he's going Seismitoad. So, uh, and that's his last grounded Mon. So it doesn't accomplish anything for me to click... Um, spikes right here, so I'm just going to go for an Endeavor, it's going to bring his Seismitoad down to 8, eight HP, exactly, uh, and I'm going to di die to the Rocky Helmet, so I'm going to go into Megalopony now, and I'm going to click Power Up Punch, and uh, I'm going to kill off the um, the Seismitoad, and I know that he's probably going to go into Hydra after, because he's going to see that I'm at plus one, and I could potentially kill his Celesteela with, for example, a High Jump Kick, uh, so I know that the Hydra's coming in, and I know that it's more than likely Superpower, because I already saw Outrage. So we saw Physical, and uh, I'm thinking, okay, that's fine. He can go into it. If he clicks Superpower, he lowers his own attack as a result. My last Mon is Darmanitan, and that can get up a sub if he's at minus one, and he won't be able to break it on the following turn. So... He goes into his Hydra, takes 12% from rocks. Uh, he's actually sitting at exactly, I think, 14% right here. Goes for Superpower, knocks out my Lopany. 
And I go into Darmanitan, and this is probably one of my biggest chokes um, this season, I want to say. Because uh, I go into Darmanitan, and um, I click sub as opposed to clicking Fire Punch, even though I could have been Scarfed, and I know that he has to switch out. So I go for sub, and his Celesteela comes in, and I'm Fire Punch, and that's not enough to knock out a Celesteela. So what's going to happen here is that he's going to be able to break my sub, and he's going to be able to go back into his Hydra, which he conserved because it's over 12%, or 12.5 rather, uh, and he's going to be able to knock me out with, uh, with an Outrage, because now I'm below the range where, uh, Outrage, uh, where Outrage would not have taken me out. Uh, had I thought about it for two seconds, then the Hydra would have... Uh, would have not been able to, uh, to knock me out when it came back in. If I had just fire punched the Celesteela on the switch and then fire punched again, Hydra actually didn't even knock me out with max attack, Adam, and EQ. However, Jolt has a little brain fart too. He has air slash on this thing. And if you guys remember, my Darm is really, really bu bulky. And he goes for a heavy slam. And I calc this damage. And it turns out that there's a 4 out of 15 chance that he does not break my sub as he didn't right there. All he's got left is the Selly and the High Dragon, so all I need to do is click Fire Punch twice. And we actually beat Jolt. Again. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Somehow, uh, I pulled out this win. Uh, I was really not expecting to win. I built this team kind of uh, really quickly. I was like, okay, let me hazard stack him and build things that just run through him. And you know what? It worked. Um, for once this season, that actually worked. Uh, and... Actually, I, I shouldn't even say for once this season, because that's probably the first time... Uh, he actually crit me right there. I didn't even see that during the game. He crit me. If he would have crit Outrage after I went for Fire Punch, Fire Punch on the Switch, I would have been furious. Um, <laughs> so that's uh, that's a good thing uh, that uh, Heavy Slam didn't break the sub there, because uh, I might have actually just lost to the crit anyway. But uh, anyway, guys, uh, yeah, that's, that's the first time that I've prepped this way, where I was just like Hazard Stack plus Hyper Offense, and it actually worked. Um, and I was I was kind of in shock. I, I think Jolt wasn't expecting me to bring hyper offense and more so bring checks to his stuff uh, because he's got a lot of real threats on his team. Um, but I, th I, th I think my my matchup was decent, and uh, I think I played decently as well. He should have definitely air slashed. Uh, I think w we both agree on that. I think that was a huge choke. I think we both choked. Uh, but there was a chance. I didn't calc the earthquake, which I, what I should have done was calc the earthquake from the Hydra. Uh, as well as the Earthquake from an uninvested Celesteela or Stone Edge, for example. Um, if after Superpower, his Earthquakes could still not knock me out, which I did the calc after, and if he was uninvested on his Celesteela and Adamant Scarf on his Hydra, um, there was a... One roll was 37, and the other one was 65. So there was a very, very, very small chance, and those are max rolls. Uh, there's a very small chance that he would be able to knock me out uh, after Superpower plus Stone Edge or Earthquake from uninvested Celesteela. But I didn't know if he was uninvested, so there, I couldn't really tell. Uh, I couldn't take that chance. If he decided to stay in with Hydra, uh, which realistically he never would. That's the thing. He never would because he EV'd his Hydra to be faster than my... Uh, my Darmanitan when scarfed, so that would mean Jolly actually. So um, yeah, his, his superpower would have probably never put me in range of uninvested Earthquake. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Either way, uh, I played for uh, the fact that he would stay in because my sub would stay uh, unbroken, uh, or rather, I'd be able to. Uh, yeah, uh, my sub would stay unbroken. I would knock out his Hydra Hydragon on the following turn, and then I would get two hits off on the Celesteela, regardless of it, if it's uh, autonomized. It would need to be scarfed. Uh, basically to deal with me at that point, and I really, really doubted Scarf Celesteela. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a win for the Montreal Habsols. We're now 2-6 and six, uh, with a uh, minus 13 record. Uh, I'm trying to win the rest of the season, honestly. I'm trying to win out uh, from here on out, so uh, we'll see if that happens. Uh, hopefully, if I keep building like this, I guess, uh, maybe, maybe I might have a shot. We'll see. But uh, that's going to wrap it up for this one, guys. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below. Go and check out Jolt. Uh, I did say this earlier, but if you haven't been following him up till now, then you haven't been following the GBA because Jolt is destroying everybody. Uh, people that I have lost to, people that uh, that people didn't expect Jolt to be, like Joey, for example, uh, aim. But I know that Jolt is an incredible builder. 
uh, an incredible player. So if you guys want to go and check out quality explanations, post comms, go and check out his channel. Uh, the token minorities also do uh, other things like TCG. Uh, there's a there's a tournament that went on yesterday. Hopefully it's uh, it's already up at this point. But uh, by now, by the time this video goes live, I will have played in March Madness. Uh, I'm trying to win. Uh, as you guys know, uh, last year we had a pretty good run in March Madness. If you weren't around at that time, then uh, uh, definitely go and check out that video. It's really, really long, but it's uh, it's a great video. Uh, I ended up, um, well, I won't tell you what position I came in, but yeah, anyway, um, definitely go and check out the Token Minorities channel once, once you guys get a chance. The link will be in the description down below. As I said earlier, like if you did enjoy, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys soon. Ciao.